folks, and welcome or welcome back to NTI's Japan Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, Ziv Nakajima again, and this podcast is brought to you, among others, by Native Shark, which is an online platform for learning Japanese. And what Native Shark do is they make learning Japanese really, really simple. You log in, you click a button that says study now, and the platform then shows you exactly what you need to learn next based on your previous progress. Now, again, this is simple, but the way it's designed means that students who use Native Shark once a day for four to five months can complete the equivalent of over two years of university study. And this is not just、um, them patting themselves on the back. Now that Native Shark's been in business for over a year, the results are in. So, this is exactly what people are saying.、Uh, just looking at a couple of posts in their community forums. And the student community, by the way, is one of the best things about the platform. So, one person's writing, most productive year I've had learning Japanese. And then another one says, I've started learning over a year ago with all of these other platforms, and what I learned there is only a fraction of what I've learned on Native Shark in just three months. And then yet another one goes, In my mind, my study timeline only started with Native Shark because that's when I really started learning consistently, and on and on. So, yet the proof's in the pudding. It's definitely the best online course out there. And since you've heard about it here on the podcast, you also get an extra little bonus. If you sign up for their free trial、uh, using the URL nativeshark.com forward slash NTI, and we'll link to it in this episode's show notes. So that's native without an E. So N A T I V shark, all one word, dot com forward slash NTI. You use that link to sign up and you'll get a double length free trial. So two weeks free instead of just the one. No need to put in your credit card or anything of that sort. You can just sign up, give it a shot. And chances are, at the end of these two weeks, you'll already be far ahead of wherever you are with your Japanese at the moment, whether you're just starting out or you're already in knee deep. Give it a shot. NativeShark.com forward slash NTI. All right, so we're back with the Japan Real Estate Experts panel today, J Rep, or rather the、uh, panel minus one member, our Akia Ninaka expert, Matt Ketchum. Couldn't join us as he was apparently dealing with some rotten scoundrel thieving monkeys out in the countryside somewhere. We'll chat about that a bit. We'll also give you one last heads up on our business networking and gaming event that's taking place in a few days if you're tuning in before December 10th. We are going to do a quick recap of the Retire Japan、uh, first online conference, which took place a couple of weeks ago. And then we're going to go right into a pretty long conversation about COVID quarantine accommodation, short term stays, Airbnb, and how to maximize their profits,、uh, not just in Japan, but all around the world. Domestic travel, lifestyle investments, management companies, and their availability. Probably one of the more casual, off topic sessions we've had to date, and a whole lot of fun. So, one little housekeeping announcement before that. We're soon going to have an open spot for our top of the episode sponsorship slot again, the one that's currently occupied by Native Shark, which you've just heard about. So, if you've got any product or service or project that you'd like to promote to English speakers living in, doing business with, or interested in Japan, feel free to reach out to us either in the comment section of wherever you might have found this episode or via email on info at nippontradings.com. We'd be more than happy to discuss an advertising spot on the podcast with you. Prices are still very affordable, a lot less than what you'd expect it would cost, I'm guessing. And we can put you in front of, or, or rather inside the ear of、uh, our 20 or 25,000 annual listeners here on the Japan Real Estate Podcast. All right, so without further ado, here's the Japan Real Estate Experts panel, J Rep, or rather three quarters of the panel, talking about, well, lots of things. Enjoy, and I'll see you again on the other side. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Again, <laughs>、um, shall we get into it? A little introductions. I think we've been working、sure. on this. We're only, three, we're, we're only three today, aren't we? We're not four. Yes. Yeah, we're missing、uh, a good friend, Matt, Akia in Inaka,、um, the other half. But let's,、uh, Tracy, why don't you start with your little.、Uh, so, you guys, your, your names, usually on your names, you have like. Oh, yes. Says oh, it, oh. Tokyo based real estate agent. That's me.、Um, So, yeah, if you, oh, okay, I'll, I'll start off. You can、uh, start. I'm going to set my name. So, anyone who、uh, is looking to buy a house in Tokyo, I'm a real estate agent. I help、uh, foreign families and, and well, generally local residents、um, buy their home in 
in Tokyo. Um, we also arranged financing. Uh, we had the you know we were licensed agents, so we had the loan officers assigned to our agency. So any questions about financing and stuff like that, uh, I'm your guy. Ziv. Yeah, um, Ziv Nakajima again. Uh, we do investment yeah. properties, holiday homes, land for development, commercial properties, any anything um, regardless of what kind of real estate it is. So we represent people who are dealing in real estate in Japan, and mostly we represent people who are not hands-on. So either remote investors who are living overseas um, or people who live here but just um, don't have the time or the bandwidth or the language skills or the inclination to deal with it themselves or just need consultation along the way. So that's what we're there for. Tracy. Yeah, so, so I am the short-term rental slash mimpaku professional. So um, I've been running short-term rentals for 10 years. So um, I have my own properties. I also rent from investors or I co-host. So um, I do profit shares with people who own properties um, and I can help maximize revenues from, um, from properties in Tokyo, but also I can help um, outside of Tokyo by advising the best way to set up a business and maximize the profits from short-term rentals. That's me. I love okay. me some profit. So. <laughs> cool. I will kick it off. Um, I got this. Ooh, Rubik's Cube. Yes, yeah. Rubik's Cube. It's on. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, um, Rubik's Cube. Uh, it's one. Of, it's uh, it was a present from my brother-in-law to my kids. It's one of the connected ones. So it's a uh, Bluetooth connects to your phone and there's an app and it teaches you how to do it. So, um, oh, I need one of those. I never could get past a single side. Yeah, yeah. Likewise. Um, so basically, in in the in basically a day and a half of playing around with it, I can now do it in about five minutes. After forty years of, of sort of considering trying to figure it out, um, well, thirty years, I guess, since I was a, a little kid, <laughs> um, trying to figure it out, I'm finally able to do it in a day and a half, and it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Okay, um, Christmas so cool. is Christmas is coming up. That looks like it's a gift for my little. For my little, uh, for my little guy. But let him try. It, yeah. let, let him try it on his own first. Like the app yeah. only comes in after you fail, right? Oh, I uh, Try not to get this. Mm. Oh, well, there. Oh, well. It's a, it's Ruby's connected. Um, it's made by GoCube, GoCube, um, and Ruby's connected. But the reason I bring this up, um, is because Zib, I want to hear about what you're doing with your. You know, this 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 channel's a bit about soft promotion. I'm generally real estate related stuff, but yeah. you have a board game. I was never into board games. Um, so apart from Monopoly, and my brother always cheated and beat me. Uh, but yeah, what, tell us about this board game event. You have networking board game event sort of you have coming up. Um, kind yep. Of yeah, curious. it's actually shaping up to be um, kind of the real estate event. We've got at least three real estate professionals mm. that I'm aware of uh, who are, who are uh, turning up. But what it is, is um, it's not just board games. So it's basically... A, a, physical so not a virtual which is a rarity these days but it's a physical um networking socializing and networking event where people will get together um at the lovely montan hakata hotel in fukuoka and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be basically doing whatever you do when you go to a business networking event so we're going to be um, getting to know each other telling each other about our businesses and our business interests and we're going to be doing brainstorming. If someone's got a business idea, is going to run it by the um, by the attendees and the speakers and so forth. But the um, the unusual, I guess, the unique factor to it is that instead of doing like silly, because it's a three day event, right? Like if you go to a normal business networking event that's like over um, you know a few hours on the evening or during the day. You basically have your little icebreakers. You wander around. You chat to a few people. You exchange business cards. Might be a speaker, and it's. It's kind of, um, it's short enough to be comfortable, but if it goes beyond a few hours, it's usually a bit awkward. Like you stick to your cliques or you get little, little groups and you talk to the people that you know. So what we're doing here is instead of um, having an itinerary and the socializing exercises or icebreakers, we're just going to be playing games. So board games, card games, that, that's just nothing that quite brings people together. Like, you know, sitting around the table and learning the rules to a new game. And we got all level. Like we got... Um, Simple little icebreaker party games, card games, like um, Uno style, exploding kittens, all sorts of stuff where people uh, just go at each other and have fun. And we're going to have more um, medium complexity games that um, work on like yeah, 
puzzle solving, problem solving skills, resource management, um, risk management sort of thing. So a lot of stuff that actually translates very well into business arenas. And for the hardcore gamers who are probably going to be um, up uh, late, we're using the, we got the hotel, um, not to ourselves, but the pub public areas and the uh, conference rooms are ours. So we're going to be, uh, be able to use them uh, every day until about midnight. So we're, hardcore gamers will probably stay up late and go hardcore thematic games, aliens and zombies and strategic uh, war games and so forth. But um, it's a real mix. So we're getting a lot of business people who sort of want to unleash their uh, inner geek and get to know other people and get to play some games. And we have quite a few gamers who've got business ideas and would like to maybe test them out in a business setting. And uh, speakers-wise, we've got Jason Ball, who's um, probably familiar to yeah. expats in Japan. Yeah, the king of uh, networking. And so Jason's got, uh, Jason's the owner um, and admin of the Business in Japan uh, online community, which is now about 70,000 members, I think. So the biggest networking, English language networking community in Japan. And he's going to be talking to us about how to establish business relationships in Japan, how to properly network, which is a little bit different in Japan as, as what we use to overseas. And he's going to be talking to us about the challenges that foreigners face when they're trying to do business with the Japanese for the first time and vice versa. A lot of challenges that Japanese people need to wrap their heads around uh, when they're doing business with foreigners for the first time. And we're going to have Mario Long, who is um, co-founder and um, CEO of Sakura Phoenix, which is a company that helps uh, children learn about business by setting up business and pursuing their dreams and putting ideas into um, into practice. And he's actually, together with his son, he's actually, as a, as a test case, he's actually and designed and marketed and crowdfunded uh, board game, which uh, kind of ties into the whole theme of the event. So he's going to be talking to us a little bit about that. And uh, myself going to be talking about my favorite game, which is real estate investment, obviously. So looks like good fun. Well, Three days. None people? of you are coming. I can't believe it that none of you well, are coming. Well, how many people are going? Um, at the moment, we've got, there's going to be 12 or 15 of us that are there for the weekend, but a lot of people that are going to be coming in for a single day attendance on Saturday and Sunday, mostly. And um, mm -hmm. some of us will be coming in from uh, since Friday. So staying for the weekend and a lot of people just popping in for a day at a time. So we got uh, ticket options are single day attendance, two day attendance, three day attendance, with a room, without a room, with meals, without meals. We've got all options out there. Yeah, oh, it's just just hard to, to decide because you know with small children it's it's uh, hard to get away. So uh, yeah, you, your kids your kids kind of babysit themselves, right? You can let them loose in Fukuoka City. My eleven year old. Oh, okay, maybe around the hotel, maybe. Yeah. Around the hotel. Well, if he's got a screen, he's happy, right? So. Yeah. My yeah. eight, six, and four. So. Yeah, yours are too yeah. little. And, and 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 the weekends are just like. Well, you, no, no one has free. They like, don't have personal time. The, the weekends are just full with kids' activity, soccer club, um, yeah. the soccer, basketball, jujitsu, um, rhythmic gymnastics, regular gymnastics. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's unreal. I, I'm like, I've missed up. Always oh, there's there's um kids who have ma marathons. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's My son does karate it. twice a week, and I'm not going beyond that. Like I am not putting in my weekends for soccer and baseball and basketball, driving around the country and doing camps and preparing sandwiches. No, thank you. Yeah. No, no, my, my kid catches the train on his own. It's just like, <laughs> fine now. So, or he rides his bike. So. That's such a spirit. But yeah, yeah next event, Sam, we have gotten a lot of feedback that a lot of Tokyo people, we, we do have a few people from Tokyo and Osaka, but a lot of them, a lot more of them wanted to come and um, they just really prefer it was if it was in Tokyo. So uh, next year's event is probably going to be in Tokyo. Yeah, well, uh, but, but, you know, what about sort of like, uh, you know, there's so many uh, remote places like Inaka places, actually, which Matt was here. So, um, but there, there are a lot of really good options that are in the countryside for running off sites and, and um, um, no. that are all set up for, you know, th that you really don't, you don't really see as a foreigner unless you're sort of connected in that world. We were, actually looking really at, cool um, we were looking at quite a few of those, but I guess because they're Minpaku, they're not a hotel, right? So they really need to get their registrations uh, booked and paid or at least half paid in advance. And because this is the uh, first event, we just didn't want to commit to a few thousand bucks before we actually knew how many people are coming. And with the hotels um, 
as you probably know, hotels in Japan are pretty lenient. Like you can make a booking reservation and only pay them two days in advance, even if it's for a group. Um, well, right, 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 now they are too, right now they are too, with the borders closed. Yeah, um, yeah right now they're, they're hurting. So yeah, Having said that, they've yeah. run out of twin rooms already. Like um, they said, they're really sorry, but if anybody else books a twin room, they're going to put them in two singles or they might put them in a four bedroom which I, I guess the twins wouldn't mind, but yeah, they are, um, they are filling up. I think with the, with the, I mean, obviously we've got the whole border thing going and there's a new variant and so forth, but domestically it's pretty laid back at the moment. People are definitely traveling a lot more and the go-to campaigns come back and then um, they're, they're slowly getting booked out. So um, yeah. domestically is, it's happening here. And it's also something for people, anyone watching the, this uh, this video, Fukuoka is, is really a happening place. It's like, place. you know, I, I always, you know, Tokyo is great. I think, you know, if you're coming for a trip to Tokyo, you obviously you have to come here. But um, uh, but there are so many more places outside the Golden Triangle, you know, the, the, the Tokyo, Kyoto, Osaka. I mean, it's like Fukuoka is a really good place to go as a, as a visitor. Uh, Nagasaki is amazing. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, my goal is, you know, while I live here is to try and hit every single, um, every single, um, prefecture. So, um, I'm doing pretty well. I've sort of hit 80% so far. So oh. I haven't sort of, yeah, I've, I've still got a couple of places, um, uh, around, you know, that west side of Osaka, you know, along that Sea of Japan side. So a uh, Totori I haven't been to and some of those other places, but I don't know what's out there. So if anyone can enlighten me by sending me a message and tell me what's really good to see out there, I'm, I'm up for it. We need Matt for that. We do need Matt for that, yes. Um, he's not feeding goats today, feeding monkeys maybe, I'm not sure. Well, we can talk about him because he's not here. I mean, I really, I do, have, I had said to him, I've got questions. I have questions. He's saying that he's in an Inaka place where next door is in Akio, right? It's empty, but there's monkeys that are squatting. And he's seen them going in and out. It's just like, but my questions are, do, do monkeys set up like a sort of domestic situation? You know, do they have bedrooms? Do they, you know, do they... Um, <laughs> are they looking to invest? Are they mad. paying the rent and are they invested? Yeah. Right. And they've been stealing his sandals. Like, what are they doing with his sandals? Like, they're stealing his sandals from outside his front door. It's like... Okay, well, what are they doing with your scent? Are you wearing them? What are they doing? Well, these are like uh, crows, I think. They steal anything that, you know, looks mildly interesting. They just pick it up and go. Yeah. So, you know, obviously something to think about when you when you visit, uh, like, especially in Naka areas, is like the wild boar and the wild monkeys. So, yeah, it's never a dull Watch day. for the rattlesnakes. They're out there. Rattlesnakes. There are no rattlesnakes. No, not rattlesnakes. Um, um, what do you call them? Uh, Mushi, mushishi, mushishi. What, what, oh, what? like the mukade? No, 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 no. The, it's a snake. It's a poison, a venomous snake. It'll kill you. I forgot the name though. They're pretty popular mm. in the uh, in the long. You had me at snake. You had me at snake. Uh, like I, I, I see, I see a little wiggle in the grass. I'm out. I'm going. Yep, same. <laughs> Come on, where is? We've all spent time in Australia. It's like all the wildlife there will kill us. But I'm just. I saw a snake up in Iwate just a couple of weeks ago, and when I was hiking up there, looking at Akia. Um, and, uh, they, yeah, I saw a snake and I just, you know, with the training of growing up in Australia, you just stop, right? Yeah. You don't move forward. It's like, oh, there's a snake. I'll go away. And you, <laughs> they're more afraid of me than they are. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone, so, I was just listening to a podcast about that. Anyone that's ever been attacked by a wild animal is most likely their fault. Yeah. Yeah, YouTube absolutely. proves that time and time again. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So get out of your vehicle doing a nature, yeah. like doing a, a safari. <laughs> <laughs> to, to pat a, a lion, <laughs> the posed lion. Um, Rem reminds yeah, me yeah, of just to uh, summarize, stuff. just to summarize on the event. If you are happening to be watching this before the tenth of December, or rather before the eighth of December, because that's the end of the uh, booking date for us, um, flights to Fukuoka are really cheap at the moment. I think they're about fifteen thousand yen, so mm -hmm. about a hundred and, and a bit, hundred and a bit yep. dollars. Um, come, come down for the weekend. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, and we'll link to the event in this episode's show notes and so forth. In the show notes, like and subscribe. <laughs> Is that Let what you get want to ask, Chris. Daniel? Just about the event? That, 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 exactly. That, that's that, no, no. That, that's exactly what I'm trying to ask because you know, again, the games and stuff like that. And I know you know you had something going on, and that, that seemed like a very relevant event. Yes, thank you. Um, to sort of talk about. The other thing I want to ask you is a real estate event that just passed. Um, I think it was on Tuesday. 
So, uh, well, who's it? Um, ben Tanaka at Retire Japan. Yep. I think that Retire Japan, um, very, very great Facebook group, excellent forum. It's just a wealth of information for, for anyone who wants to know anything about Misa and uh, uh, Hideko um, investment stuff in Japan. I bought his books um, maybe two or three years ago. I think like 2008, his e-books. And I just, I was trying to figure out about Misa and, and Hideko. <clears throat> um, just trying like, checking different websites and looking at different information and it was just like all over the place and so i'm like okay his books so just download it and for like you know 2000 yen a book in english they're probably the clearly. only source right yeah yeah right um definitely like, you, you can try to get some versions of it but what it actually means how it applies and stuff um his book so it's just like it's just a great summary uh of of how it well actually more than a summary just like great sort of in-depth in details about how it works and the pros and cons and and how to utilize it and and what have you so but um that the retired japan i think did their very first like retired japan conference i think it yeah. was an online conference um and that seemed really interesting and i wanted to participate um and actually we shout to to ben when we were doing the clubhouse group because i had the, the tokyo club um and we were, that was pretty big i'm like you know i was looking to get speakers and stuff for to, to do events on the on clubhouse and i reached out to him and he's like oh you know what no i'm not not so into that um sort of stuff and and being on those kind of programs this must now have been pre-covid right uh no no what was that it was about a year ago it started this year actually okay. i think this year he's like been getting into that and doing that stuff and i noticed he he had um he organized the uh retired japan conference first retired yeah. japan conference which i wanted to do but my kid had a jiu-jitsu tournament on all day again one of these <laughs> one of these things but you were one of the speakers Yep. So I'm very, very curious how, like, how, how was it? I know it was like all online, sort of a, a, um, like a, a was it WebEx or what? what? Um, they, 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 tell us about it. I think it was a Zoom link. Uh, it was a really, really good, um, really good uh, day. It was almost a full day, I think 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And um, initially, Ben was giving a presentation about just the basics of saving for retirement and personal finance and, um, how to um, how to actually just change your mindset, um, and he mentioned in a previous we we had a chat with him on our podcast the previous week and um, with Haley as well, um, who's helping him market these products to younger generations, mm -hmm. and um, we he sort of mentioned and I think that's very right for a lot of us that um, there's no point you know for people to actually realize that they need saving uh, or retire for retirement or investing in some way. Um, usually there's a trigger point, which is usually a pain point, like something actually happens to them. In his case, he lost his job. I know in my case, it was credit card debt, right? Like everybody, everybody has a, like a particular point in their life where they suddenly realize like, oh shit, I need to do something about that. I need to make sure this doesn't happen again. Right. Like, and, um, there's a mindset change there. And we talked about a lot of things during his presentation. And one of the things that he mentioned, which, you know, was not really, expanded upon in the conference but it's because it's not really related to saving and retirement but one of the ways to have more money when you um, retire assuming that you're saving and investing is to increase your income right like if obviously if you've got more income then you can also save more and you can invest more and um, I think that's a lot of that is what we're doing um, here either by you know running our own businesses each of us does that investing in property each of us does that and um it was good fun. And following that, we had a presentation from um, Adam Millerchip, who is uh, helping Ben with creating the Retire Japan Wiki. So a uh, Wikipedia-like database, because the, the community, as you mentioned, Emil, the community is great. I mean, you, you get in there, you ask a question, there's so many helpful people who will answer you right away. And you can sort of search through past discussions through the forum and try to find what it is that you're looking for. But a Wikipedia-like database just makes it so much easier for people to contribute data, put it down under categories with certain keywords, links to other articles. So he's working on that, and he was explaining how people can um, utilize that and contribute to that. And then we had Daniel Mills, who also lives in Japan, but is investing in the USA. He's originally from the USA, and that uh, for various reasons, financing being one of the major ones, um, he prefers to invest in that market. So he was explaining all about the... Um, um, the pros and cons and the ups and downs of investing in uh, real estate in the U.S. 
And then I was last, it was really easy for me to uh, sort of segue and, and, and you know, bounce back, uh, bounce off whatever uh, he mentioned, and then try to illustrate the differences between investing uh, in the USA, or I should say investing in most Western countries versus investing in Japan, because the market fundamentals here and the way things are done here are quite different. Um, so I was talking a lot about that, obviously ran over time, as I always do. Um, but it was good. It was good fun. There were a lot of questions on all the presentations, I think. And uh, I ended up getting more and more questions following that uh, via email and uh, people reached out on LinkedIn and so forth as well. Uh, at least one new customer already that I'm aware of um, that heard about us through the conference. So good fun. And obviously yeah. content. We love um, curating more and more content, right? And putting it on the YouTube channel, the podcast, what have you. Yeah, thanks. Fantastic. Yeah, because I saw that. I was really excited. And I thought, you know, this, like, I, I really wanted to reach out and say, you know, I want to present as well, because I think buying your own home, the way, you know, I've mentioned many times on yeah. here, uh, is probably like one of the, the financially, most financial prudent things you can you can do as a first step. Like, basically, the rent you're paying, just that goes into equity growth, right? Yeah. And that's for basically while, whilst you're living. So, um, yeah, I think that, that was very, very, like, that would have been very relevant, just the schedule didn't, didn't work out for me. Um, I definitely love, love what he does. So please do put the link um, below for the yep. Retire Japan website. Uh, the face, I think they get the Facebook group, uh, their forums. Um, and we should try to reach out to Ben and get him. Well, I guess you, you know him better than I do now. He's been on the podcast um, a couple of times already. It'll be good to have him there again. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. But um, yeah, I guess maybe with this, uh, I don't know, like a, a real estate sort of chat. I was going to do detailed yeah. interviews questions. with everybody on the panel, but now we're just doing these interviews every week almost. So there's not much of a point of having you on a separate interview. Like, what will we talk about that we haven't already talked about? True that. True that. <laughs> I guess I don't listen to your podcast, right? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> You're not Joe Rogan. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss is my uh, kind of podcast, but that's not really doable in Japan, I think. Okay. Mm. okay. Yeah. Um, um, I've got, oh, so I guess not real. I, yeah, back to sort of the, the Airbnb and short-term stays and stuff like that. Uh, recently, um, well, I guess my travel plans, when you throw in, I was planning to go to, as many of us now, I was planning to go to Australia for Christmas time. Um, but with the restrictions on returning to, a, returning to Japan, basically the, the quarantine requirements at a government facility, um, when you have kids, I'm like, getting yeah, no, that. That's it. I'm going to rule that out. I could have done the train, that. right? There might be some, uh, there might be some lockdowns and stuff going down in Australia soon with that new strain coming out. Uh, I, mm, you know, I don't. I feel that they're not going to lock down. I think the the government has already said they're not going to lock down domestically. Because, like they've all, they're not going to go back to lockdowns. They they've finished with the lockdowns. Most people are vaccinated. They're not going to do that again. Um, once they're out of lockdown, it's now living with COVID especially in, in, in Melbourne and, and, and in Victoria and New South Wales, at least. But the issue rather for me was merely like, when we come back, because of the new strain, um, we're going to have to do ho uh, government facility qu uh, quarantine. Three and days. for us with, with kids, yeah. Um, well, it's currently three days. If it gets worse, like for Australian returnees, it's three days. If Is it, it gets worse, then like... Oh, you mean in Australia? No, no, no. 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 Coming back. Coming when back. we come back. Oh, in Japan, it's so 10 days, isn't it? No, no. Three days, no, they've the, the rules are changing daily. So, yeah. you know, what, what we're saying today may not be valid tomorrow. Um, it's three days in a government hotel that's free of charge and that will include all meals. Um, you don't get a choice of your room. You do not get a choice of your location. They just uh, drop you there. And then you have to continue the rest of the 14, it's now back to a full 14 days from landing. Um, you have to do the rest of that at a uh, either at your house if you live you know with your family or yeah. if you can't you cannot travel on public transport during that time and you've got to sign all these agreements um okay so that's that's still happening right that's yeah, still so happening and they've reduced that they haven't they you're not allowed to do the 10-day reduction anymore uh they've oh, they've the actually scrapped that business and oh so that's even worse now okay yeah. that that's a pain because there's not that many flights going in and out of Fukuoka at the moment. So for me to uh, go anywhere, I'd have to go through Tokyo and then I'd have to be stuck in Tokyo for two weeks. So no. Precisely. Yeah. yeah. And an expensive hotel that's got to be yeah. uh, not, not government mandated hotels, but they do have a list of which hotels you can stay at, right? No, no, you can come. Oh, stay, any hotel? You can stay, so, you can, no, you can come. I do quarantine stays. 
this is a me putting up my hand. I do plenty of quarantine stays. Okay. So if you're, and I've done that a number of times for people like yourself who, who live in regional areas, they fly in, they need to stay for 14 days. Um, and uh, yeah, so we even pick people up from the airport. So, What's the cheapest you can get away with for that sort of um, uh, quarantine? See, you're talking to a hard-working small business owner. Asking for the cheapest thing doesn't make my heart sing. <laughs> I'm interested in making your heart sing. Especially a when... bit of income for you and a cheap trip for me. Yeah. Sure, well, it... sure. It depends on which property. It depends on which property and depends on and on how long. So yes. I'll I work I I do I, like I'm. I'm really just at the moment. I'm really just trying to look after people, and I'm yeah. and it, there's. I've already written off any profit, um, any profit oh, expectations. Bad. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not expecting to make profits. I really just want to cover my costs. So, and I've got different places. So, depending on how many people, depending on on the dates, um, I've got some options. So, um, yeah. I, Can it be I, at I, like business hotel price levels, or is it always going to be more than that? Can like uh, up to like uh, eight nine thousand per night, or can it? Yeah, be... I can do that. Yeah. I can do that. Okay. Mm. okay. I think it also depends if it's like you know, Trace also has some houses, right? Yeah. It's a three three bedroom house. Like you know, you, that's not you know a few thousand in a night um, no. versus a, a one LDK kind of place. But so, the, but the general rule is you know you need it's you need to quarantine for fourteen days. Day arrival day is day zero. Um, yes. Before depending on like when coming back from Australia, it was fourteen days at home. Right, so you take private transport from from Narita to like if you're in Tokyo to our house, and then we could have stayed here. And, we, and you can go to the supermarket, some essential sort of stuff, but we could have done it with the three kids at at home, even though we felt it was a bit tight. But right now, it's if you're coming from Australia, it's three days at the government facility first, and then the remainder of the fourteen days at home at your house, yes, um, or, or or at a at a you know wherever. But basically, it's like. One of if you don't live in Tokyo, maybe one of you know Airbnb type property, right? One mm -hmm. of Tracy's places, but because of that uh, hotel quarantine, the government facility quarantine requirement with kids, it might be like a one room sort of place. I'd have no idea about the size of it. Yeah, it's not something we can do. And also, if during the month we're in Australia, we come back and it's changed to like now, I think the UK is six days, or if they change, you have to spend the full ten days in in the in the facility. Might happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and I heard just this, yeah, like that's too much with the kids. Um, and I heard also this morning, I was reading, um, like if you're returning from Africa, like some certain African countries, even if you're a resident, this issue was doing before, even if you're a resident, they're not letting you return, only Japanese citizens, not even permanent resident holders, like which is that's the, one of the, my main concerns. Like if there's suddenly mm -hmm. a breakout in the country that I'm going to be traveling to, whether it's Israel or Australia or Thailand, then they could just flip on us and say, you're not coming in at all, right? Precisely, yeah. So, so that's why we're we're staying um, put, and I guess we're going to have a great snow season without any tourists. So, making the most of that. But yeah, definitely impacting um, Tracy with some of the short term stay. Yeah, look, opening up, we were excited for. I, I look, I'm I'm a, I'm still optimistic to say I'm still you know optimistic because like. You know the the news articles that I'm reading, and maybe I'm just looking at an echo chamber, um, looking at for picking the news that I want to read. Is that they have been very very cautious, but all signs are quite positive right now in terms of. It was for a hot minute. It actually back. looked like it actually looked there for like people were actually going to be coming back as soon as January, like the tourists and everyone. But yeah, um, yeah that's kind of like been put on the back burner again, hasn't it? That's right. I think it's, that's right. I think it might be like another three month delay at least mm. until and but, just for this one but for people if you're watching from inside of japan the jr rail passes have been opened up yes foreign passports if you're a foreign foreign person on a foreign passport in japan you are able to get jr rail passes at amazing deals so looks like that for our little family we could go to niseko for five days or for three well three days skiing and you know two days traveling for much less than it would be for um than flying so does the train go to hokkaido i actually mentioned to somebody yes. really is there like yes. a bridge or something a tunnel or under ocean path tunnel goes to shin hakodate yeah um and uh and then you just <clears> change <throat> to the local line 
uh, and uh, to go to Kuchan, which is the nearest station to Niseko. Mm -hmm. I was not aware of that. I actually gave somebody um, false information. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, so it goes. It's it at the goes Shinkansen from, now. The, 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 that's Hayabusa. Yeah. But what am I? Mean, you can get to Hokkaido without a flight. You can get to Hokkaido by train only. I was not you, aware that this was a thing. Thank you. But this this Shinkansen is. It, because I remember a few years ago, I heard that they're building the Shinkansen. So it's actually completed the Shinkansen from Tokyo that goes through to Hokkaido. Hakodate, Shin Hakodate. So it goes yeah. to Shin Hakodate. Mm. They are extending it to um, Sapporo, but that's that's not going to be until 2030. It's going to be, it's a few years away. So yeah, it will be that you can get the, the Shinkansen from Tokyo to Sapporo um, uh, in five hours or something. So that's fabulous. But it will stop at Niseko, so that'll be a real that'll be a real game changer for the people who are coming in on to go skiing because they usually use train passes, and um, you know they'll use their train passes. It'll take the pressure off the road. The road between um, Sapporo and Niseko is horrendous, and it takes a good three hours when you know when if it's snowing and it's dangerous. So yes. this way, it's a much safer way and, you know, much more reliable way because if, if it's a big snowstorm, the trains will go, but the planes stop. And so you, if, you've got, if you've got accommodation booked um, in, uh, in Niseko, you will miss it. Like you won't get on a plane for another couple of days. This has happened to me before. So it's a, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. Mm. We're looking forward to the domestic travel. So. You notice we haven't spoken, someplace. actually, we haven't said anything about real estate today. Emil, are you okay with all of that? <laughs> I am, I am. My, my issue wasn't focused on real estate as much as, you know, when we just speculate about what the government should do or future government policy, I think um, th th that was the stuff I always wanted to stop. But this yeah. is, we're talking about more current situation and stuff like that. So <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy with that. But it's life, it's lifestyle in Japan. And that, that you know, when you choose to invest here, it, you, it's not you know it's not just purely for financial reasons it's it's a lifestyle investment as well and well, uh, these are the things that can can really impact your decisions to either come as a as an investor um or whether that be investing into short term or whether the long-term places or you know single family homes whatever um there's a certain lifestyle aspect that that doesn't really have necessarily a monetary value but i think more and more people are really valuing that um, rather than just the hard numbers. Yeah. Or is it just me? Uh, no, no, yeah, no, 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 that's, that's absolutely the case. I think you're correct. But also very much this is, um, you know, we, we talk about real estate and short-term rentals. And look, you know, in terms of the investment side, be it for personal homes or investment side, you know, myself, and we always get inquiries about, well, what about Minpaku type stuff, Airbnb, short-term state? Um, and this is, you know, a specialty. So I think just talking about, you know, because I've done, I had, I think at the height of Airbnb, I had 12 properties. Now I've got six properties that are that are listed that, that we do. And some of them now, because of the situation, we're changing them away from, from Minpaka to regular rental, right? Um, and so that's stuff that this discussion that we're having in terms of the struggles we're having as, as hosts, as Minpaku, like investors in the, the Minpaku side, the short-term stay side of stuff, uh, is I think important for people to hear as well because you know, they think it's just the easy money, like, you know, easy money. I'll just, I'll just get an investment property, put it on Airbnb and make two or three times. It is in a lot of the, countries. It's, yeah. I mean, it's a fair assumption to think that it could yeah. be similar here. And, and it was, it was. Um, oh, um, well, it, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll push back a little bit on that. It seems easy money. Um, and, but to really make the good profits, it's not just putting, putting a couple of curtains up on the walls and four, you know, four coffee cups and calling it a day. You can really dig in and maximize profits if you are strategic about your marketing, strategic about your design, who's coming in, making sure that, you know, you're, you've got a product that people are willing to spend good money on. Um, just making a cookie cutter, um, you know, a cookie cutter listing um, will doesn't will get you a certain amount of cash, but digging in and, and really doing some decent marketing and uh, planning on your um, uh, on your customer base will will allow you to to really get much more profits that way. So that's that's, that's, that's what you do, Tracy. That that's exactly that's what, what you do. I do. Well, yes. 
Um, yeah, no, but I mean, what, what I was trying to say is that in, a, in other countries, like in Australia, for example, it is, I mean, it's not as simple as that, but it is pretty much a case of you got a place, you rent it out on Airbnb. You might make a lot of money, you might make a little bit of money, mm-hmm. but all the compliance and legal issues that um, that Japan, at least since 2018, has, has put on that, they don't really, I mean, they exist in some places that are maybe suffering from over tourism or have had some issues with, you know, guests getting hurt in properties. So they did they did put their foot down and legalize it a lot more. But um, a lot of places around the world are still doable. I mean, you got a place, you rent it out on Airbnb, you make mm. it money, right? The doors um, are shutting. In America, in America, they're really going through some massive, um, some massive regulation issues. Um, and there are various community groups, action groups that are um, that are for and against, and it's a it's a real battle um, right now. Um, that some places that was a matter of just put it up, build it, and they will come. Well, that's that that's actually the market's maturing. It's not going to be that way. So actually, you've got as it, we yeah. speak, as we speak, I'm just realizing I know somebody who's now um, working in Singapore uh, as senior management at Airbnb. I think I'm going to try to get him uh, on the podcast. That should be a really interesting person to talk to. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, yeah. 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 So, yeah. But, um, like you mentioned, Tracy, the the market is maturing. The business yeah. model, the, the Airbnb short term stay business model, is maturing. Yeah. And yeah, so I think let, let, let's not let's like remove government regulation and that that aspect of it aside. Just the product offering. I think when we started in Tokyo, like 2015, I think is when I uh, 2015 is when I first listed my first houses for Airbnb. I thought I'll just test the waters and stuff, and this was pre-regulation, but also. It's quite new, right? Airbnb is just sort of in the market for maybe a year or two years. Like, there's not many properties. That was a time you could just really, anything would just stick. Just because people coming, no one had any expectations. Clients, customers, visitors. It was just, it's still quirky and novel. They didn't have a lot of expectation. Um, hosts would, you know, try, like they'd bend over backwards um, to a degree. Some were just like trying to profiteer. Like, it, was, it was really just a, a mess. Um, some were doing really great work, some weren't, but customers weren't experienced enough yet, right? A lot of times it's their first day, but now over the years, I think the visitors are now able to know, like there's re- lots of reviews, they have an understanding of what their minimum expectation is. And they got more options, right? Yeah, they, they, they have more options, but also there's a bit of a shakeout, like in terms of the hosts, now hosts that are still doing it, there's no new hosts, brand new hosts, oh, well, I've got a property, I want to put my room out for Airbnb without knowing everyone's quite experienced if you want to come in new and not know what you're doing you're going up against people like tracy who knows what she's doing and she's and you hear when she speaks she knows how she needs to market it how she needs to take the photos what additional services she should be offering and so you come up and you're like oh i've just got a room i'm going to put it up i've got my place i'm going to put it up without the right facilities without it being kid friendly or the right sort of internet or pocket wi-fi facilities the right kind of dishes and all that sort of stuff um you're not you're going to struggle. You're really going to struggle. The, 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 and I think with anything, when it's new, the barrier to entry is so low and customer expectations are so low. Mm-hmm. Because all like, yeah. the, the customer expectations aren't there. And right? remembering so at the well. time when we first got into it, Emil, like, you know, there wasn't a lot of opportunities for families to go and stay. Um, and so that but that was who the government was really pushing um to come in but then there wasn't a lot of the infrastructure i mean at the apple hotel for example as a as a hotel chain is is fairly new um but there's still all those small business business size hotel rooms which are not family friendly at all and um and you know you being a family guy understand the needs and so you were able to put together a product instinctively without sort of thinking much about it that was really needed at the time and that's why you had the ton of success that's how I also had a ton of success because because it was an instinct because I was almost the target customer as well and that was who was that was the the majority of the people coming in um and I picked up a ton of work as well from people that had gone into a place that you know arrived it was too ghetto and it was just like they would immediately be checking in and checking out because it was so bad and so and then coming to a place like ours a few of those um, in europe it was horrible actually oh yeah you check in and it's just like whoa okay so um it it did settle the you know having the regulations it did settle the market out you know if you 
it got rid of people that were opportunistic, who weren't really serious about hospitality and uh, left the people who were prepared to jump through the hoops and do it because they, you know, they were doing it as a full-time job. They knew where their bread was buttered and they knew how to look after people to get the maximum amount of money. So That's what the meal was emphasizing, which I think, which we constantly emphasize to whoever contacts us uh, asking about this kind of thing is, um, Yes, you can make money off it, but this is a job. It's going to be a half-time job, a full-time job. Even if you're hiring a professional like you, Tracy, you need to be communicating with them on a regular basis, making decisions on a regular basis. This is not like a once every couple of years do a renovation and in comes a new tenant, right? It's not a hands-off passive uh, income type of investment. No, not no, it, it's not. not um but you've also got to like it and like, you yeah. know, enjoy the lifestyle. And, you know, we've been able to, uh, you know, have a lifestyle where my husband was involved. He was able to give up working in a restaurant. You know, he was a restaurant manager. Hours were awful for, you know, when he's got a family, it's, it's awful. So it, it suited us in a lot of ways, not just the financial, which was great, but it suited us in a lifestyle sense as well. And, and, um, uh, yeah, I've just really enjoyed the life. I'm wondering, Tracy, if you're ever going to be the one to pick up the uh, gauntlet and help us um, find a management solution for Inaka guest house properties. Like the only thing that people, like if somebody wants, uh, of course, if they buy a, like a big hotel or resort, then obviously they're going to hire staff. They're going to put somebody there. They're going to apply for a hotel license and so forth. Mm. But all of the people who want to buy just, you know, their little dream holiday home, you know, maybe four or five bedrooms, and when they're not there, they do want to rent it out short term stay and they're happy to do what it takes, but there's just nobody to service them in those areas, right? Like, how do you solve that? I mean, iseco has got a lot yeah. of management companies, but, you, you know, buying in Iseco is like a half million dollar exercise at the least, right? Mm, yeah, you have to be in an area that actually has the, you know, has the infrastructure. Um, I mean, there are certain things that you can do with remote tablets, but still you need to have the confidence to have a, you know, boots on the ground. Um, and there's a lot of places where you can't just get to in an hour. Like, you know, it takes three or four hours to get there if there is a... If Legally there is as a, well, you have to have a person within a certain distance from the property, right? It's oh, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. It, it depends on the, the ward it's regulation okay, and whatnot. Yeah. But like, you Each know, ward's even, different. Like, I, I live in Setagaya, and I had one of the early ones was near Tokyo Skytree. So in Tokyo, but like in traffic, will take me about an hour or so. Mm -hmm. Just managing that, any issues that arise, having to go there to do something was a complete chore. Um, where, the, you know, if it's within a 20 minute drive, that's okay, but it could be an hour, like, and because mm -hmm. often it's not your primary job, right? You have other sort Usually of stuff, and then all of a sudden, job, yeah. yeah, right? Um, you then you've got to sort of just like, oh, I'm going to have this side income, side hustle sort of thing, and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. you've got some issue or like. The, be it even though the toilet is blocked or they have oh you know it's like a certain recurring issue with this particular property that you know like they 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 this guest so often has a problem or maybe they've just the key issue with the key they've lost the key they can't figure out we had this thing with called ninja lock which was like this uh the smart smart lock i've got like five of them now i think i've got to sell them got to get rid of them um they functioned okay they're like the automatic like bluetooth locks they go over the the regular sam turn thumb turn um Mm -hmm. locks that you have so you, from inside you can just use a smartphone app boom, and remotely unlock it and we tried to implement that for guests so each guest could have download the phone app and then use it but it was just so messy and so clunky to do we thought just the regular key was was easier um but yeah if, like there's a guest who's you know an hour away and they're like the app's not working yeah i you, you gotta you say, yeah like oh and the, the spare key Oh, there's a lockbox on the side of the house, and that's got the spare key. Here's the code for it. Like, oh, it's not opening. Okay, well, uh, all right, in the car, being a hike over. And uh, then you get it in five seconds, yeah. And you go there. What here, I'm asking is, is it going to be? Do you think it's going to be possible for some company to be really smart about it and like set up offices in like prefectural capitals, mm -hmm. right? Like have, for example, a small office in uh, Niigata City. And have somebody, just a single person in that office who's going to be servicing the Niigata Airbnb, um, Airbnb properties or guest houses around there. One for uh, Nagano, one for, I mean, there are particular concentrations of areas where these holiday homes are getting a bit more popular. 
Um, but maybe it's possible to do that without waiting for them to go up to Niseko level prices and just somehow find a solution. Yeah. For it, it needs to make, so the cost of having someone clean a property, um, like, don't, like manage a property and clean the property is kind of quite similar wherever the property is. It's more yeah. the size of the property, the amount of bed sheets that need to be done, mm -hmm. et cetera, right? But the problem is if you're in Tokyo you're char or like you're in one of these big places, like, you know, more popular areas, you're charging 20, 30, 40,000 yen a night, all right? Whereas if it's further out, it might be 8,000 yen a night. So, yeah. But the cost for the cleaning and maintenance stuff same. is kind of, is, is the same. So all of a sudden, the, the cost of a clean for the property is like, is like a one night, two night stay, plus the cost of cleaning is 50% your, your, yeah. your stay. Yeah. Right. Whereas here, the cost of cleaning is oh, it's only ten thousand yen for cleaning. Well, that doesn't really matter. What I'm paying, you know, sixty thousand yen a night for four nights. Mm -hmm. Ten thousand yen is nothing. Well, I'm paying thirty thousand yen yen for four nights, and then hold on, another ten thousand yen on top for cleaning. Um, it's no longer attractive. No, no, you're right. So, I'm just, I, yeah. I feel sorry for them because there are so many people who have this dream of owning, you know, a holiday home and also renting it out when they're not using it. And we just don't have a solution for them, unfortunately. Yeah, no, um, and I think there's most... Oh. I was going to say, it's really on a case-by-case -case basis and, like, you know, may, you know, make little hubs of your own, like... You know, find the find the little find the other hosts in your area and share the share the resources. Um, That's not a bad idea, actually. And recognize, well, yeah, and but recognize that the more the better organized that you are, the more attractive you get, the more business that you're going to get. It's not you're not going to come, not going to white out each other's business. It'll, it's yeah. going to be like that. You you're going to have more things for people to choose and so the pie gets bigger yeah i don't so, think it's competition at all i think it's actually a collaboration that's actually a really good idea like if there's a bunch of these properties around these parts um then as you know as a collective they can hire a single person to take care of them or they can hire yeah and see that's where i would see airbnb or home away or vrb or whoever it is that's where i see that they could be of most use is to build these community relationships but they're basically hands off we provide the platform and that's it it's like they're very yeah. hands off they don't well we're gonna bring the airbnb guy onto the podcast and we're gonna have a chat about that <laughs> Put well i want i do want to hold their feet to the fire i mean I, look don't get me wrong i love airbnb but i think i would like to push them to be better because they're missing a massive amount of opportunity first of all by by not raising the profile of just domestic um you know the domestic market um domestic people just it, it's not they just don't choose um, uh, to go with Airbnb when they when there's so many advantages of doing that. Um, but it's a mindset thing, and it, and that means that it's up to Airbnb to perhaps sponsor a Netflix show which is local and show how the benefit of local communities. I'd I'd help produce a, a, a Netflix show where you go into these local communities and you show that you do some renovations, you show that. Um, you show that you're helping other small businesses and how more people coming into those areas will just help everybody as a collective. It sounds like it'd be right up uh, Matt's alley as well. Absolutely. It'd be right up Matt's alley. But I mean, it, it shouldn't, and it shouldn't be a foreigner coming in and being on camera. Like it should not be that. It should yeah. be, it should be a Netflix shit series um, where it's, you know, Japanese communities and, um, you know, doing renovation it'll be a renovation show for example and 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 then how to um uh how to uh, you know uh, attract um attract new money into the area by increasing domestic demand um and showing all the little quirks of the area i mean you know there are people out there doing that just need to give them the exposure right well they're on uh, they're on youtube there are there are japanese guys doing that stuff on, on youtube and they, they're fixing up places and trying to promote places and things um, and, and Matt, Matt does it as well. He's like he tries to promote lo local area, like a lot of his his newsletters and his, his videos and what have you, his Instagram. Um, but I think there's another issue. The, the other side of it is local residents. Maybe not everyone is happy with. Um, uh, but, but, but having with a TV show, like, but having a TV show like that, and and actually, you know, Proving I know in, yeah. I know in my local area, the local yakiniku guy, the local 
you know, the, the yoki, local yakitori guy, every time I go and, you know, go and eat meals there, I'm not allowed to, I'm allowed to pay because they love me so much for bringing in new money and, and recommending that, recommending their small businesses because that's the beauty of a, a short term because it's different from a hotel stay. It's a different product. It's a different mindset. People want to understand the DNA of where they're staying. They want to go to the local supermarket. They want to go to the local, you know, they don't just want to bed so that they can get up the next day and go to Disneyland. They want to understand the people who stay in a short-term rental really un- want to understand where they're staying and, and also they want to be spending their money in the local area. So the local business is a good good thing to hit. I mean, it's a sort of a counter punch to the grumpy Jisan Basan. That's um, right. Yeah. Like, like yeah. yeah. Yeah, but the grumpy and, Jisan Basan next door is not noisy. going to be yeah. well, it's not going to be welcoming of it. That, 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 that's a problem. Like not everyone is on side with hey, let's have more strangers come to my local residence where my, my home area, my my local sure. neighborhood. Um, businesses, sure. yes, of course. Uh, local residents um, may not like that, that's why I mean it's 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 hard to say oh yeah this is definitely good for the area because not not all yeah. the area is it's case by case again is, like you is, said is yeah. in is a, in agreement that that is the best way forward. But I mean, um, you're I not think gonna, that's the issue. You're not going to convince the 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 grumpy or Jishamba or Bacha. You're never going to convince them. It's the people in the middle who who are just unaware of what the you know the benefits are that need the educating. Right, the 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 Oji Chan, the Obachan, you're never going to convince them, so don't even try. It's yeah, the yeah, education yeah. of the middle market. To, yeah, I mean, you don't have to convince them, but they, they are residents, and their opinion is still valid. Absolutely. They, so, so, so they, if they just don't like someone, like they don't want that change. I mean, that change is not necessarily good for everyone in that area, right? Not everyone is open to that. Not everyone wants it. And and problem is, local governments will also like. You say, oh, let's open up, let's get more tourism and stuff. And they say, okay, like when Airbnb, when they first started regulating, it's okay, the most important thing with the Airbnb regulation is we need to protect the community, protect local residents. So that's why a lot of um, districts had restrictions of you can't have it during, um, like you can only have people on weekends or during school holidays, not when kids go to school. They can't interact with these like just people here and there yeah, or like only there's a reason, residential areas there's a reason so. that kyoto and venice and you know international hotspots all around the world are having an issue with with short-term stays i mean they, they, they've got a case to make i'm not saying they don't yeah. but there, there, there does need to be a bit more of a balance and i think japan is a little bit skewed towards the conservative side here oh, yeah, also, it, it is also the responsibility of the host to be a an active host and to educate it's it's I see my job as a host to be educating my guests on how to be good guests and making sure that they've got you know first of all if you're just looking for a party if you're just wanting a cheap bed then then I'm not your I'm not your host and 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 really you're not you know it's not the right fit but if you're really interested in in being a good community member then it's my job to also you know communicate those uh, community concerns and also give you the information that you can use uh, uh, to to follow the rules. Um, and uh, yeah. so it's it's a it's a it's a delicate balance. It's a very but again, it goes balance. back to it. Had like you said, you have to be active. You have to be involved. It's it's a job. It's a business. It's not a passive thing. So that's why part of the regulation to register your main property property, you have to have if you're not if it's not part of your house if you're not resident there as a host you must outsource that task you must have a contract with a management company a minpaku management company like what tracy uh, That's what I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. because they 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 need to have basically registered or licensed host the hosting company needs to be licensed because as tracy said the host needs to care and needs to have a whole bunch of considerations so they can't just leave it up to the individuals I, I guess mean, they're also part of the not all created uh, equal, though, right? There are some management companies that you know just tick the boxes, and some of them that actually go out mm-hmm. of the way to make it uh, work. Yeah, but but they're licensed. But yeah. like any management company that is their proper registered business, and they have minimum requirements they need to meet, being reporting um, uh, amount of like uh, phone support, etc. So it, it's not just a hobbyist; it's a proper. Um, it's a, you to get registered as a host as a management company is not an easy task. Um, so no, no individual is just going to do it 
um, it, it may not even be possible for an individual to, to get it because you need a certain level of real estate experience or an employee who's got a certain level of real estate experience in order to get uh, registered as a host. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and because they know just an individual say, oh, I'll be a good host, I promise. They go, well, okay, you got to meet these requirements. And no, no. So registration to become a host, um, like a, a hosting company, is quite challenging as well. Mm. Yeah, and they, they, they want all the details. And, and also it's so that if there are any problems, they know that they can, you know, that they can come point the finger at someone. They've got someone to blame. So, um, yeah. Yes. yes, it's a challenge. But, I mean, look, you know, Japanese, Japanese regulations are, are rough, but, but there um, a lot of other cities are going through that now. And that's been because there's been a lot of hosts that have just been, you know, uh, um, vapor, not vapor. They've just been. Um, uh, what's the word? I've got. I can't remember my English. Today. No, all the hosts that are just, um, you know, are not involved, are not engaged, um, and they'll just let. You know, they're not vetting their guests. They're just letting anyone come in, and and it's just like, uh, you know, be careful what you wish for. Type of thing, like you know, um, yeah, be careful. Be care yeah. yeah, but it will sort it. It will sort itself out. I mean, hotels are regulated for a reason, and that's a liabilities thing. So, and and the same thing's going to happen. The way the way I look at it, it's like, well, you know, when cars were first invented, there were no seat belts, right? Um, but um, but after a few accidents and after a few things happened, they went, oh, okay. Well, you know, if we put these, if we if we get people to wear seat belts, then there'll be less problems. Doesn't mean accidents won't still happen, but at least people are not going to die. And that's sort of the same thing with with the regulations. It's like it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it just means that there's just an extra layer of protection for everybody um, in the market, not just you know, uh, you know, not just the guests, but the hosts and the community. So it's it's trying to cover all bases. Mm. Mm. Okay, um, I've got to jump off soon. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Yes. So, mm. I do apologize. Uh, so for your time again, and I'll, um, now that we've gotten into this uh, rabbit hole, I'll definitely try to organize uh, somebody <laughs> from Airbnb to come and have a chat with us. It'd be really interesting, I think. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Mm. I think there are like little various community groups setting up, but there there's not a lot of, yeah, I don't, I've been to a couple of meetings, but it's not a lot of forward motion. It's just, it's just a, a place for people to have a coffee and have a chat together. It's not a lot of education and, and, uh, forward motion mm. yeah. and i think I, I might just use this as a short call to anybody who is watching um if you're somehow related to real estate uh, in japan or i would say maybe even in asia generally and you'd like to come on the show and give us a bit of a uh uh, preview or, or update on what's happening in your market and uh, whether you're in Nagoya, Osaka or anywhere in Japan that we're not really exposed to normally here on the show and this is an open invitation so hit us up we'd love to have you and all right that, we'll call it a day thanks guys, thanks, guys. we'll, hear about, we'll hear about Matt's monkeys next week then hey? yes hopefully <laughs> looking forward to it good, good luck with your event as well Ziv. cheers see you bye bye All right, that was a fun chat, wasn't it? Hope you've enjoyed it. And again, if you happen to be listening or uh, watching this before December 8th, you can still sign up for our weekend business networking uh, and board games, card games, strategy games event that's coming up this weekend, 10 to 12 December. Feel free to hop over to the event info and booking page. If you're already registered and attending, can't wait to see you all. And hopefully in a couple of weeks time, we'll be able to share some footage of the event with you, let you know how it went. Spoiler alert, it's going to be awesome. Now, before we go, we're also, as always, going to tell you and also link to our other sponsor's website. That's Hiroshi Shimizu, immigration lawyer and administrative scrivener. If you're thinking about moving here on a more permanent basis, or you're already in Japan on some sort of a temporary visa, and you want to switch to a longer term or permanent one, or if you're considering setting up a local company or a branch office of a foreign company, and you've got any sort of business or visa-related inquiries, or even if you just want to find out what your options are on any of these topics, feel free to contact Hiroshi Shimizu. You can find him at japanimmigrationexperts.com. 
and he can help you set up a company, apply for any kind of visa, or just provide you with the best advice and extremely affordable consultation related to these topics. And he's already done that for many of our listeners. So feel free to reach out to him. Again, that's japanimmigrationexperts.com and you'll be well on your way. And that's it from us for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Japan Real Estate Podcast. Do share it with your networks and please let us know what you think. So leave us a short rating or review on the iTunes store, on Spotify, or just drop us a line in the comment section of wherever you might have found this episode. We love hearing from you. Hope to have you with us again next time. And until then, have a great day or night ahead. Yoroshiku. Yoroshiku.